Thank you for being here. We are in for a very special treat this morning. This is part one of a four-part series through the summer on poetry, poetry and music. And we are just delighted, me personally also, to welcome Michelle and Scott, her husband, and Sawyer is up in Sunday school, I'm presuming. Um, I just have to say a little bit about Michelle. I met her almost 10 years ago when I came to All Saints on sabbatical. And I did an adult ed workshop on music and workshop, uh, worship. And Michelle and I connected at that, at that session. And from there on, made a deep connection to, to our personal love of music and worship and how we believe. And at the same time, they were going through a very personal, amazing and difficult crisis when their son Sawyer was born. And this church was very, very supportive. He was in the hospital for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. How many weeks? There we go, 99 days. And Ed was the one who really, Ed and Hope, put their arms around him and welcomed Sawyer and, and the Blooms and, and, and Nelsons into our midst. And Sawyer, we're so pleased to say, is heading for his 10th birthday. And that's just fantastic. It's through the prayers and support of this parish and obviously the dedication of, your, of the parents. And I'm sure all of that made a difference to your music. Along the way, Michelle is so talented as, as a mus musician, not only with children's music in her distant past a little bit now. She has moved into working with poetry and interfaith entities and the, the area of neuroscience and started to put e faith of East and West together with poetry and neuroscience. She's going to tell us more than that, more about that. She has this wonderful concert that she performed with Lineage Dance. I'm sorry we don't have the dancers here. Uh, but for those of you who know Lineage Dance Com Company in Pasadena, they do fantastic work um, on Raymond, Raymond Street, Raymond Avenue. And I am delighted to see the concert for the second time. And we are just very, very lucky to have you here. So without further ado, Michelle. This cave in the air behind my body. There is this cave, this cave in the air behind my body. Then nobody is going to touch our cloister. Silence closing around a blossom of fire. When I stand upright in the wind, my bones turn to dark emeralds. When I stand upright in the wind, my bones turn to dark emeralds. When I stand upright in the my body there is this cave this cave in the air behind my body then nobody is going to touch a cloister of silence 
closing around a blossom of fire. When I stand upright in the wind, my bones turn to dark emeralds. When I stand upright in the wind, my bones turn to dark emeralds. When I stand upright in the wind, my bones turn to dark emeralds. When I stand upright in the wind, my bones turn to dark emeralds. When I stand upright in the wind, my bones turn to dark emeralds. When I stand upright in the wind, my bones turn into dark emeralds The Jew. Thank you. I want to uh, pick up an actual book and the tangible feeling of it and open up a page and just take a look at this. Uh, this is a poem that I just sang called The Jewel by James Wright. And I want you to notice just a few things. All of this beautiful, empty space. Do you see that? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines in all of this space. It's so great. You can't talk to it. It's just space, which is the most important thing to poetry and in our life, to find that again. Um, I'm going to read one more from James Wright, or two. A prayer to escape from the marketplace. I renounce the blindness of the magazines. I want to lie down under a tree. This is the only duty that is not death. This is the everlasting happiness of small winds. Suddenly, a, f a pheasant flutters, and I turn, only to see him vanishing at the damp edge of the road. This is the summer poetry series, I want to invite you, just leave you with this invitation to find empty places this summer full of spaciousness and silence. This next poem that I will read is Laying in a Hammock at William Duffy's Farm in Pine Island, Minnesota. One more time, the title. <laughs> Laying in a Hammock at William Duffy's Farm in Pine Island, Minnesota. Over my head, I see the bronze butterfly asleep on the black trunk, billowing like a leaf in green shadow. Down the ravine behind the empty house, the cowbells follow one another into the distances of the afternoon. To my right, in a field of sunlight between two pines, the droppings of last year's horses blaze up into golden stones. I lean back. As the evening darkens and comes on, a chicken hawk floats over, looking for home. I have wasted my life. Yeah. Well, I know that you, I'm probably speaking to many poetry lovers out here, and there might be many Mary Oliver fans it's in, a, in a place like All Saints. So I'm going to sing another one of her poems.
one. Don't bother me, I've just been born. Two, the butterfly's loping fly, it carries it through the country of the leaves, delicately, and well enough to get it where it wants to go, wherever that is, stopping here or there to fuzzle the damp throats of flowers and black mud. Up and down it swings, frenzied and aimless, and sometimes, for long, delicious moments, it is perfectly lazy, riding motionless on the soft stalk of some ordinary flower. God of dirt came up to me many times and said many wise and delectable things. I lay on the grass listening to his dog voice, crow voice, frog voice. Now, he said, and now, and never once mentioned forever, for which has nevertheless always been like a sharp iron hoof at the center of my mind. of lightning, some deep memory of pleasure, some cutting knowledge of pain, six, but to lift the hoof, for that you need an idea. Just to live my life and then the butterfly rose aimless in the wind. Don't love your life too much, it said, and vanished into the world. tendency as a songwriter is to say very little so that I risk killing it. There will be some questions at the end if you have some. Just briefly, this is called Fields of Attention and um, I did get inspired as a songwriter at a bunch of conversations that were going on and I wanted to be a part of them somehow and I saw that there were um, well, I, I, about the time we were going through the hospital, I listened, I was given a copy of some tapes of a poet, a neuroscientist, a Buddhist, and the monk. And these four chairs, they were having this beautiful conversation, and I'd never seen anything quite like it. I mean, All Saints does that all the time, but that the art and the faith 
the arts and the sciences and the East and the West could sit down and have a conversation to me was completely beautiful. Um, and so I began to, un to ask a lot of questions about what was going on. And as they talked about mindfulness and they talked about poetry, and they would talk about poetry being the most integrating in the brain and you know, language is in the left side of the brain, poetry and images and pauses, breath, things that are very non-machine-like are in the right side of the brain. And, but poetry has this wonderful thing where it, it just makes you get all of it in your brain. And then, of course, there was this wonderful practice that had been going on for 2,600 years of mindfulness where they were skill, giving you the skill of this. And all of it had to do with really focus and attention. I was trying to then think about distilling that into a practical thing that I could work with every day. Wash this cup, shake this hand, walk this mile, plow this field, take this step. You are not your thoughts, you are not your feelings, can you? Can you let the stories of your mind come and go? Can you let this moment be complete and full, this breath? Just notice and enter Field after field after field Make this bed Drive this car Cross this street Pay this bill Plant this seed you are not your thoughts, you are not your feelings, can you? Can you let the pride of your mind come and go? Can you let this moment be complete and full, this breath? Just notice and enter, field after field after This hill, smell this flower, hold this stone, watch this cloud, wait this hour. You are not your thoughts, you are not your feelings, can you? Can you let the pain of your mind come and go? Can you let this moment be complete and full, this breath? Just notice. Whose woods these are, I think. 
think I know His house is in the village though He will not see me Stopping here To watch his woods Fill up with snow Must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. His harness spells a shake To ask if there is some mistake The only other sounds the sweep Of easy wind and downy flame are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep in miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. The words are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep in miles to go before I sleep. are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep in miles to go before I sleep, miles to go before I sleep. Speaking of sleep, this uh, next song is, uh, was written with a line from Shakespeare about from The Tempest, and it was in honor of my husband's grandmother turning 100 years old. didn't mind the cold Our little life, our little life is rounded with a sleep Our little life, our little life is rounded with a sleep she wore her best dress She had on stockings And pearls She told us how she once Fell off a horse When she was a young Girl We sat her underneath the willow tree The enameled sky The cut grass The blackest Dirt Our little life, our little life is 
surrounded with a sleep Our little life, our little life Is surrounded with a sleep For breakfast she takes her coffee straight With a simple side of toast please And then one day in March the nurse is called to say she's not her soul to keep they said she's sleeping with a sleep I have to go our little life our little life is rounded with a sleep our little life our little life is rounded rounded our little Thank you for letting me introduce poetry to you this summer. And I hope I've done my job to give you more of a feeling, a felt experience of what's going on in all that space. Poets are absolutely amazing to me because they make music without music. Every syllable, every comma, everything is working. And I'm, I can only speak as a, as a reader to poetry, as a, as a songwriter inspired by poetry. But I hope you find some empty, empty places and make some space to read that this summer. Again, this is the jewel. And I think this is the best I can ever say about poetry. There is this cave in the air behind my body that nobody is going to touch. A cloister, a silence closing around a blossom of fire when I stand upright in the wind my bones turn to dark emeralds <laughs> There is this cave in the air behind my body. There is this cave, this cave in the air behind my body. Then nobody is going to touch a cloister. A silence closing around a blossom of fire. When I stand up right in the wind, my bones turn to dark emeralds. When I stand up right in the wind, my bones turn to dark emeralds. When I stand up right in the wind. this cave in the air behind my body there is this cave this cave in the air behind my body then nobody is going to touch a cloister a silence closing around a blossom
What a treat, as I said. I hope we all get to stand upright in the wind and find lots of spaces this summer. I'm thinking we have, we started right on time, so maybe we could take a couple of questions and then maybe have a song after that, because I'm sure, I know Michelle has more songs. <laughs> Cooper. Oh yeah, completely. Um, there, there was that. Yeah, the nature of that crisis was just unbelievable. You know, um, we would be, I would be hit with new information every four weeks and try and recover from that. And then we found out um, through the pregnancy that we had lost an identical twin, and I was carrying him in utero, and there was nothing anybody could do. And I was just in for the ride of my life, only I didn't really, I was naive. We were reading the gentle water birth, the natural birth, you know. We, I was way over here where I wanted to be, and life was way over here where you're out of control and you um, have to show up. Um, we were... We had just heard about the poetry series 10 years ago. That's what brought us to All Saints. And I would sneak in the door and come listen because I've come from far away Presbyterian places. And, <laughs> and uh, behind that, very, very conservative Bible belt. So you are now you know, seeing a person who's come from a very far journey. There is good news. Um, some folks make the arduous journey <laughs> out of the Bible belt. Um, so I would sneak in the back door, and we were just new to All Saints when the crisis happened. And I, I remember um, some of my favorite stories are Scott Richardson. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, we we got to the hospital. I think we barely met Ed. We barely knew this mm -hmm. this church, but we were shaking hands with Ed one day, and as we were coming through, and I told him briefly in the line that you know we were having a complication, and I think he, you know he just. He uh, made a note of us, and um, then when we called in the hospital, um, they had decided that the water broke at 26 weeks, and I made it to the hospital, to Huntington Hospital, and um, we made it through the night, and they decided that they were going to do an emergency C-section at 5, and um, we had a few hours to start making a few phone calls, and we called All Saints Church, and Scott Richardson was holding my hand in 15 minutes. Uh, and I'll never, you know, forget that. 
Um, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we, we were thinking about poetry. <laughs> No, we, not at all. I just, I, it was a long, arduous journey, and then um, w m everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Uh, the monitor system failed. I went into labor at 2.30, not 5. And uh, long short of it is that the Huntington Hospital was prepared for my son. He got everything, but I didn't get such a great treatment, having d I delivered eventually both ways and then woke up 10 days later with um, a blood clot to my left leg. So I was strapped down back in the hospital for another 10 days and said, don't move. So, um, you know, you think a lot about why women died in childbirth. And, uh, but we made it through that and it took me three years. Sawyer was three years old when I was given the copy of the tapes of uh, that someone said, I think you would be really interested in this. We started to unfold the crisis. You know, it had many layers, and, and so most of it is still kind of ongoing. Our son is nine years old, but you know, surviving the medical issues, um, and then you know, the the leg um, for me. But when I ran across those four chairs, it was just so inspiring because there was a way that I could practice again. Um, that I could start to find my guitar again and was deeply interested in poetry and and then just the practice of what could I do to help myself regulate through the crisis and poetry was very part of that and um, other than that it just started to come together like two different processes you know the reading of a poem would stay really deep inside of me at some level and and then on another level, the, the music would happen. And my fear was always, of course, to, to be in the way of the voice of the poet. Um, that's a very delicate thing. So I try and disappear into their voice. But a lot of the songs just kept coming and coming and coming and coming. And it's been a really fun project. So, Thank you. Any other questions? Otherwise, we have time for one, maybe one question and one song. Let's do that. Yes. Oh, okay. Loud as you can. Yes. Does your poetry always proceed the preceding being musical, or does it sometimes the music comes in? I have the poetry books kind of always going and, and reading them. And like the Mary Oliver one took me five years. I, I adore Mary Oliver and her work so much. I was afraid of going near her. I just, I just didn't think I could musically do that. The, I could, I could play the first one that came um, was a Machado piece. Um, most of the time, music comes first for me. And there's a, there's a. This came. This was a new song actually just two days ago. So this was. This was just haunting me, and it wouldn't leave me alone. And then when I was awake in the middle of the night, literally, I would hear this little, in the middle of the night, what was going through my mind was, um, little bird, little bird, little da 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 little bird, little bird, little bird, little bird. <laughs> and all I, I just learned to like, it, not, be critical to myself <laughs> because it sounds very baby language. You know, little, da, 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 da. it's rambling. Da, 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 da. But all of a sudden, I'm, my brain is doing something else and it's counting the number of syllables. And so in the middle of the night, I'm going, well, it's going to be something that goes da 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 I was struck by the cave, the image of the cave, and I was like, hmm. And then I just kept leaving it around and doing dishes and being with my son, and then later that night, I realized when I went back to sleep, and then my mind did it for me, and I realized the last two lines of the poem 
were the vi when I stand up right in the wind, my bones turn to dark emeralds. I was like, whoa, you know, and it was the exact number of syllables. And I, I had, then the poem came to me. I, I have some older CDs. Um, I need a new studio, uh, and I'm working on figuring out how to record that. Um, a lot of what this this project has let me do is, you know, once first of all, I'm I don't know if I'm supposed to do it. Like, I don't know if it's legal. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I think as far as I know. I can read a poem and I can perform a poem. I just probably can't record them and sell them to you. So um, the way I'm using this project is just to be a part of conversations. So I've worked with a lot of listening audiences and um, that's been a real pleasure. So, uh, sure. Yes, Fields of Attention is my own and then the, um, the Rounded with the Sleep is. Oh, good. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if we wanted to sing really quick, 30 seconds. Okay. Oh, as she, as she's doing that. Michelle has also been part of our parish retreat a couple of, well, more than a few times a few years back and done some wonderful things. And she sang, I think, with, and Becky Erskine played the violin with her on the Anthony, Anthony Machado poem. So I think she's going to do a part of that. And we'll take the question at the end if there is more time. But this is beautiful. In either, whichever. Maybe the switch of one's shorter? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, so since we're talking about poetry in the process and there's nowhere else for me to hide now, um, this is, you know, the Spanish romantic poetry is the most lyrical um, because of the romantic languages. So I got lucky with the very first, the very first one because... Um, Antonio Machado is like Spain's beloved poet and it's in Spanish this is a translation by Robert Bly and um, but I was just again the I never played this chord before because it's a really awkward chord to play in a guitar G minor usually want G major for a guitar so you have to I have to not play this string because it will sound very out of tune. So I'd never played this chord before. And then the rest happened. I was sleeping, I dreamt a marvelous hair That a spring was breaking out inside my heart I sit along which secret aqueduct Oh water, are you coming to me? Water of a new life that I have never drunk Last night as I was sleeping, I dreamt a marvelous air That I had a beehive here inside my heart And the golden bees were making white combs and sweet honey Making white combs and sweet honey from my old failures I want you to sing and to feel Let me steal the hour for a moment I want you to breathe, deeply breathe your life, your only life, depends upon this. 
Last night as I was sleeping, I dreamt a marvelous error that a fiery sun was giving light inside my heart. It was fiery because I felt warmth as from a hearth and sun because it gave light and brought tears to my eyes I want you to sing and to feel let me steal the hour for a moment I want you to breathe deeply breathe your life your only life depends upon this last night as I was sleeping I dreamt a marvelous air that it was God that I had here inside my Thank you so much, Michelle, for speaking to us.